Good afternoon. This is HorseRacingNation.com handicapper Jared Horak. In this, this video, we're going to talk about Kentucky Derby contenders. We're actually going to do a series of videos. I'm joined by my HorseRacingNation.com and DerbyWars.com colleague Ryan Patterson. This is Christmas for horse players, Jared. Well, it definitely is. But we're going to, we're going to go right straight through the, the highest point earners all the way to the bottom. And we're going to break it up into videos of, of four horses in each video. And in this first video, our first horse we're going to talk about is Orb for trainer Chuck McGahey, the Florida Derby winner. Yeah, Orb, if you look at these PPs, wow, who would have thought he could be the favorite in the Kentucky Derby after his first three starts where he was beaten by you know, just about a combined 30 lengths? He's really come along a long way, and then he really started to, to come around at Gulfstream Park. He's won four races in a row now. Uh, he's won back-to-back -back rated races. And I like the fact that he can overcome a different pace scenarios. He was able uh, to overcome a slow pace at Gulfstream to win an allowance race. That, that found the use stakes, they were going crazy fast, and, and he was able to run them down. And then in that last race, it was more like a moderate pace, and, and he won again. Right, he was much closer there, he was adaptable, like you said, and being a closer at Gulfstream Park is almost like a death sentence for him. So for him to be able to win like he did is just very impressive. And it's, it's cool to see Chuck McGahey on the Derby trail. He's a very patient trainer, he doesn't particularly point to derbies like Pletcher or Baffert. So, so he's, he's in here, and he's got a horse that, that's bred for the distance. Malibu Moon, the sire, out of AP Indy, a Belmont Stakes winner, and he's out of an unbridled mare, and an unbridled was a Kentucky Derby winner. Right, and if you recall, Shook said that this horse wasn't really pushed on too hard for the Florida Derby, so he might have something uh, in the tank at Churchill Downs, I think to he's say still, the least. I agree, and I think that he's, he's still going to have to move forward a little bit from a speed figure perspective, but his last two numbers were much better than his previous numbers, so he does seem to be heading in the right direction. And speaking of speed figures, I'd like to take a quick second to thank Brisnet for, for providing us with uh, Kentucky Derby Contender Pass performances. Uh, it, uh, I've always loved their product. I've, right. I've used it for years, and, and, and they have good, accurate numbers. And right, so moving on, we're going to take a look at Verrazano, the Wood Memorial winner, undefeated son of More Than Ready. What have you got to say about him, Jerry? Uh, he, he's undefeated for sure. He looked good. He looked outstanding in his first two starts, and then he was he was very solid in the Tampa Bay Derby. Right. In the last race, uh, he wasn't as dynamic, but he still got the job done. But the pace scenario was completely different from his first few races, where the pace was pretty quick, and he was able to kind of run his rivals off their feet. And in the last race, they were going one thirteen right. and change for the six furlongs, and he was able to sit close, and he was still able to outfinish the late runners. Yeah, I think he may have bounced a little bit off of his Tampa Bay Derby win, so for him to still come back and win the Wood Memorial is highly impressive. And I've joked around a little bit with you and called this horse Big Brown Jr., and I think that might be exactly what he is. And if you recall when Big Brown won the Kentucky Derby, the rest of the crop just really wasn't much, and I'm not too impressed with anyone. And Verrazano may or may not be the real deal, but uh, if he is... Wow, look out. And he's, he's going to sit a good trip. And, and, and you could have hit on something there about if the, the rest of the crop isn't good. That's been something that I've thought. I, I necessarily don't think that a horse that, that didn't have any starts as a two-year-old uh, can't win the derby. I think right. it can be done. But I think circumstances have to, to be right. And if, if, and I, if they're much better than everybody else, for sure, like Big Brown was. He right. wasn't unraced, but, but he was lightly raced. Uh, but he a horse like one race at Saratoga over oh. the turf, I believe. Yes, you're right. And a horse like Curlin, who who wasn't able to get it done, he was an unraced a two year old, uh, but the crop was stronger that year. Right, much stronger crop. And Verrazano, I'm going to look for Johnny V to give him a uh, Bodie Meister style ride, just throw down the gauntlet and say, you know, catch me if you can. This horse has a very high cruising speed, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Quality Road in that way. And he can go out there and dole out quick fractions and keep on moving. And, and again, as we said with his versatility last time, with, with that slow pace, if the pace is slower or, or fast, he seems like he's going to adapt to those different scenarios. But just a question of, is he going to move forward, forward off the Wood Memorial? He was so dynamic early. Uh, did, is, I think he's going to continue to improve, but, but maybe for the short term, maybe his improvement has ended and he'll, he'll move forward again later. We'll have, we'll have to see how it all plays out. Right, and so important for not only Verrazano, but every horse in the race is going to be post position. Does he break well? Does he have any sort of trouble? And I think Verrazano, more than some of these other horses, needs for things to go his way. He definitely does, and I think he's and another thing is workouts. We're going to see how this right. works out. And I think he's going to have a workout tomorrow. The Pledger horses are going to work uh, tomorrow on, on Sunday, and we'll have to, to follow that. Right. Uh, our next contender is going to be Golden Sense. Now, I know you were high on this one before. Right, yeah, I've got a couple bucks on him at about 30 to 1 in the second future pool, so I wouldn't be too disappointed if he happened to wear the roses. And, and he comes off of a, a big bounce-back victory. Uh, he, he looked like a solid derby contender going into the San Felipe, 
But in that race, he dueled on the lead. He got tired. Uh, we were a little bit suspect about his stamina, but then he bounces right, back, yeah. and it's very impressive in the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah, I got a little chilly on him after that San Felipe win, and if you recall, leading up to the Santa Anita Derby, Krieger all week long was like, hey, everything's fine. He's going to bounce back. He can rate. I promise he can rate. And you know what? He did, and he won. And the interesting thing is they changed the way that they were training him. He was working him strong six furlongs, bullets in 110 and 111, right. up, up, up to the San Felipe. That then, might have been the difference maker. Yeah, and then they, they slowed it down. They, they went like 114, 116, and maybe that helped melt his stamina. Right. Uh, I don't know that he's 10 furlongs. I'm not sure. I still have questions about his ability at 10 furlongs. I think the pace has a lot to do with it. Uh, maybe that Santa Anita track speed favoring carried him the nine furlongs. Right. I think at Churchill, if the pace is a little more moderate, I think it, that will help his chances. Right, and that uh, definitely could be a factor. This is a horse with a ton of talent, though, and I think just on that, he's going to be able to get the distance. And he could take some money. You have last year's Kentucky Derby winning trainer in there and for Doug O'Neill, and, right. and you're going to have people that remember. Rick Pitino. Have for sure. Exactly, Rick Pitino. He'll get a story. And, and Kevin Krager, another right. not yeah. only with that low-profile rider. So I think he's going to take money, and, and he's going to be at least a forward factor. Right, absolutely. But the final horse that we're going to talk about in this video is going to be Java's War for trainer Ken McPeak. He ran against Verrazano in the Tampa Bay Derby, finished second, then he flattered that one by coming back and winning the Bluegrass. Yeah, Java's War likes to make a big move around the turn and come firing late, but uh, unfortunately for him, he just seems like he's a little bit on the slow side. He's going to need for everything to go his way, and not only that, he's going to have to run the race of his life to win the Kentucky Derby. He definitely will, and, and I, these late, late horses, so they, they just sit so far back, he really has no speed, he's going to sit... Close to 20th, he's going to be towards the back. He's got really. the right jockey for it. He's <laughs> Julian, like for real. He definitely does, and he's going to have to weave his way through, and and and, and he's going to hope for a quick pace right. and, and and maybe mill him down. He's probably more likely to finish fourth, uh, but but um, his task isn't going to be impossible if the pace gets crazy. Right, Ken McPeak looking for his first Kentucky Derby win. Now, he is bred for the distance, but I wasn't particularly impressed with the blue guys. I don't consider him a contender. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, just after mind that bird, <laughs> and yeah, anything I guess right. can happen. To if Java War, Java's War wins the Kentucky Derby, I'm probably going to have a lot of tickets to tear up. <laughs> I'm right with you on that one. And that'll wrap up this video of, of our four contenders. Now, one more quick thing I want to say, uh, since we're going to bracket these horses into fours, uh, who, who do you like best out of the four horses we talked about? Um, Verrazano. I'm not too impressed with any of the other ones. Verrazano, Golden Sense, I think, are two very legitimate contenders. Not really crazy about a war, not crazy about Java's war, as I just said. Uh, for me, I'm going to say Orb is, of, of these four, I think he's the most legitimate threat. I, I like his winning spirit, he's got a decent right. pedigree, the right connections. And if he continues to train well, uh, I'll, I'll definitely consider him into my top three. Well, that'll wrap it up for this video. But we'll be back with our next video, and we're going to start with Overanalyze.